All right, hopefully this uh, video will bear some fruit or at least help somebody out in the future. We're going to do a compression test on this uh, SUV. This is a, a four-stroke converted. Hang on one second. Four-stroke uh, converted SUV using the VX110 MR1 motor. Um, and I just, let's see, yesterday I rode this thing for its initial break-in after a, a bearings up rebuild on the motor. Then converted it over and uh, let's see. The net result of the the, uh, the ride after the break-in period was a whopping, depressing 43 miles per hour on a cell phone GPS. So the relive video that I did showed 45. Cell phone GPS showed 43. So I'm going with 43 instead of inflating the number. So the question is, what's wrong with it? I know my, well, I gotta check my jet pump yet. I do need to do a compression test anyway and a leak down test. And I figured we might as well start out with the plug read. So what we have is plug number, uh, front plug. So I'm going to call that number one, two, three, and four. If you look at number one, that is a little bit on the fouled side, if you ask me. I mean, even the, uh, the uh, insulator down there, whatever it's called, the white part is a little bit uh, darkened. I wonder if I can do this with a magnifying glass. Let's see if that'll uh, net any better... So anyway, there it is. Two looks pretty good. It's uh, kind of bronzy, got a little dark on it maybe. Three, it might look a little darker than it actually is on this video. Let's see if I can light this up a little bit with some overhead lighting. Mm, that looks terrible. I don't know if this will help or hurt to be honest, but all right, so. Dirty number one, maybe a little better on number two. Number three is a little bit like number one, a little bit dark. And then I really like the looks of uh, number four here. So if I'm a guessing man, I'm gonna say my cylinder compression when I do this is gonna be worse, the worst one, second worst. Uh, second best and then this will be the best on the rear ends here so I need to pull my notes to remember uh, what my compression test was right after the rebuild after a what was it about a eight minute seven minute garden hose run it was pretty poor results but I thought I remember the rear cylinder actually being the best so without further ado let's uh, get on with the compression test for this test I'll be using a snap-on uh, compression tester however as you can clearly see if I can focus on this thing. I'm off of uh, the zero set here by quite a bit. So uh, that first tick, let's see, that's 40, 30, 20, 10. That first tick is 10. So I should be, I'm a full 10 PSI off. Whatever these readings are, we gotta subtract 10 from them. Okay, so uh, what we've got is the throttle is pinned wide open. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take this uh, butterfly inside a throttle body it's going to put it completely wide open by doing so. I've also disconnected the two electronic plugs there on the top of the fuel pump just so that I don't, I'm not sending any fuel to the fuel rail. I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I just don't want that. Um, my understanding is you can also push the stop button at the same time as the start button and that will override and, and not allow the uh, fuel pump to kick. So we'll test number one. Uh, I, yeah, let's just uh, get her going. I'll try to lay down the uh, compression numbers. I'm on the other side of the ski, of course, now. Um, I'll try to lay the compression numbers that I started with in the video right here uh, across all four. And um, let's see, yeah, let's just see what the hell we got here. That's looking ugly. Okay, we're gonna call that pitiful. So, uh, I think that that one hasn't changed, if I remember correctly, from uh, initial build on this. And looking at that plug, it very much appears to me that we either have uh, rings that are leaking some oil and burning some oil, or what I feel is actually going on is possibly the, uh, the intake valves are stuck in the open position, which we'll only find by a leak down test. So we're at, uh, was that, uh, 110, 20. 128, so we're actually gonna call that 118. 
because we got to reduce that 10, right? 118, yuck. All right, and then remember this one on the plugs we said, this one should be uh, the second best, basically. So let's see uh, how accurate we end up being on here. Looks like we're about nine PSI actually short on this gauge. You can tell it's better, but not good. All right, let's close that down right at, uh, so one nine, eh, 189. So I'm gonna go right at 180, 180 on that one. I should have been writing those down from get-go, so I forgot what the first one was already. I know it was in the one teens, but so on the on the plug read, this one should be the second worst since the first one was in the teens. Let's go with a guess of about 150. Yeah, a better than that. All right, I paused out there. So that's 50, 60, 78, 178, so 169, 169. And then with our plug read having the rear cylinders having the best looking plug, I mean, it looked perfect. So uh, two, 205, that's what we're gonna guess on this. Come on, baby. Ah, I should have gone with my gut. I was going to guess 200. It would have been closer. So 200 minus uh, the 8, we got uh, 192. 192. So, so basically we have a, a no-go here. So that's uh, this is not a runner. This is not to be sold. This is uh, going to be my personal ski anyway, I decided. So uh, the moral of the story here is if you're, lo if you're missing some top-end speed, um, if it isn't in your jet pump, and I'm going to take a look at my jet pump also, there's a clunk that I took, and it bogged the ski down, it, it almost made it look like it's going to die, I thought I lost the motor, gave out a big F-bomb as it happened, but it immediately went away, and then I hit my, uh, my high speed runs, and uh, that was the first high speed runs of the day after the clunk, so I was thinking, well maybe I hit something with my prop and bent the prop, but I wasn't getting cavitation, and, and I've always been thinking that it's going to end up being in this head here. Um, I know is where we're going to end up finding a leak, uh, I have a feeling, because when I, I redid this head, the intake valves were, um, they had some pitting on the mating surfaces, the, uh, the angled mating surface. Uh, Try to resolve that by doing a valve job, a valve lapping on them, but um, I think ultimately they're just, there's pits on there that I just am not seeing, and... Uh, and you can just see where the problems are, mainly this one and this one. This is, uh, this is within tolerance, and these are very, very usable cylinders. This one's a borderline usable cylinder at 169. I, I wanna say manufacturer spec says like no lower than 165 PSI or something like that. So we're pretty close to, uh, to needing a rebuild on this one anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and rebuild all four of these and be done with it. Uh, put in some new valves. Um, and I bet you that's where it's going gonna, it's gonna to be found is on those intake valves. I don't know why the intake valves are the ones that end up looking uh, corroded. The, the exhaust ones look beautiful on this uh, after you clean up the carbon off of them. And uh, there's no pitting, no nothing. So uh, lesson learned. Uh, glad this is on a personal ski and, and not putting this one out there. So, you know, you take a chance like that and put yourself up to a whole bunch more work. But, you know, it's part of the learning curve, part of what we do here. And, uh, yeah, live by our mistakes. So. Um, the cool thing, let's see how cool this ends up being. Not sure if it is or not, but this is worth mentioning. So on these motors, normally, let's see, you've got this bracket right here, right? This support bracket. And it's got a, uh, I always forget the name of this type of nut. Anyway, one of these, I call them a castle nut. That's definitely the wrong term. It's got this nut on there. And then it's got a, uh, a, th a double threaded, threaded there, threaded into here lug, kind of like an exhaust manifold lug. So the problem is that you cannot pull this cylinder head without getting rid of this bracket. You can't get rid of this bracket without removing the oil pump. It's, it's kind of a whole big ordeal. So what I do is I take, uh, let's see, let's see right here, I'm trying to point as I'm going. So I take that, that lug out entirely and I just replace that through bolt with a through bolt into there of the correct size on both sides. So now, theoretically, I should just be able to pull my intake off, uh, pull the exhaust off, the exhaust manifold in the hull, and pull the head, and uh, do my repair on the head without having to pull this entire fucking motor out of here. So I'm gonna give that a shot. 
hopefully it's worth the wear. It, you know, ultimately it's probably easier for me to just pull this whole damn thing out of here. But I think I want to do that just to go through the pain and, and uh, then I'll know in the future, you know, I got time, why not? Uh, so, yeah, let me check out the jet pump, see if I did any damage there. All right, so I looked in there with a flashlight and my gut is telling me this thing is beautiful. So the uh, clearance on there is definite, I can see it's within spec on that prop all the way around, evenly spaced. There's no grinding when you manually turn this thing. This uh, thing, you don't hear a little metal on metal uh, for the stainless uh, prop versus stainless uh, wearing. So uh, here's my rebuild date, I always put that on those. So this pump has been rebuilt, looks great on this side. Let's check out the back. Apparently my, this is gonna be really tricky with this uh, cell phone, but suffice to say that, you know, take my word for it that this thing looks great back here see if I can get this thing to focus with this other light come on baby it wants to focus on those intake veins instead come on, get in there yeah anyway <laughs> that's bothering me there you go all right everything is great in there there's nothing wrong with that prop at all um, it's it's just the engine so Time to take the uh, uh, the motor out again. Oh God, let's do it right and uh, and get it done. Let me show you something else here that uh, that I'm going to work on a little bit as well. So you've got the uh, you know the ride plate. There's the pump shoe. There's a step down here, and I have no idea if the objective ideally is to have this even with this. So in order to do that, I mean, I would have to shim the pump shoe itself would have to get shimmed here. Let's get caught the, uh, let's see. I could leave the intake great as is, of course. Ah, I think I see what I'd have to do. Then I'd have to shim this bolt here to bring it flush with the surface, you know, be, being careful, I don't want that intruding in a way. Um, it needs a little bit less shim on this side than it does on this side. It's interesting. Um, but you can see how these bolts, right? Uh, where'd they go? Right there. All right, so when you get the camera angle up, you can't really see the tip of that protruding there, right? Well, when I, when I redid my shimming on my ride plate, it leaves the bolts actually hanging out. So that's causing turbulence right there. It's causing drag, turbulence, performance issues. Just having these, focus. Just having those bolt heads protruding. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'll torque these down to spec. Then I'll put a, um, you know, like a, a black line, like showing direction on there, remove them, grind these bolts down on that head, on that side, as much as I can tolerate without losing the ability to remove it. It's gonna be pretty pretty close. Uh, a little bit sketchy maybe if I do that, so I may rethink that maneuver. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I need to work on this back here, because, you know, let's get the motor running first, and, uh, We'll figure out the rest later and you know fuck that this motor's coming out and the reason is I mean I bought this donor here and it's got absolutely perfect compression across this bitch so super low hours I'm gonna throw this one in my ski and then I can work on this one in the winter I am so tired of these builds um, that's the quick the quick way to get me in the water again uh, I'll just do a quick motor swap. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long that takes. I I'm gonna try to set a timer on it. So, sorry about the yap, 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 as usual, but in an unedited video, but hopefully that will bear some fruit for you in the future, maybe on plug reads, you know, knowing what to expect. This basically came out exactly like we'd expect from the color of those plugs, you know? <laughs> crappy, crappy, less crappy, decent, more decent, you know, so it's pretty interesting how that actually came out. Hope you all enjoyed.